So I'm going to be honest. The concept for this deck was a little harder, but then I had an idea. Uh, revelation, if you will. Hey there, guys. It is John back again, bringing you another deck profile. Uh, this time, we're going to be going over the Fenrir list that I came up with. Now, before I start out with anything, I do just want to say that overall, this deck is not as linear as you might think it is when you first look at it. What I mean by that is that there are certain plays that you can do with this deck in the overall uh, concept of it. However, as the game uh, progresses, uh, you as the player need to make certain choices with the deck as to attack patterns, what you're calling, uh, what is in your soul, etc. And it's things like that that I personally enjoy about this deck and the overall concept that it's not as unga bunga where you just slap cards down and you just do your plays it's a lot more that you have to think things out and lay out your strategy and because of that i built my deck in a specific way where it can try to adapt to certain play styles but without further ado i'm going to jump right into it and i hope you enjoy so starting things out of course we are playing a fenrir deck so we're playing four copies of the main man himself mythic beast fenrir so his ability, act, once per turn, soul blast one or more cards, and you search your deck for up to one card with the same grade as the total grades that you soul blasted. Then you add that card to hand, and then call a card to rearguard circle. Next, his other ability, when a card was put into soul from your drop zone, you can counterblast one and call one of those cards to the rearguard circle. And then his last ability is on Vanguard, when he attacks, soul blast one, and he gets 10k power. So overall, this deck is, in itself, only built specifically to ride Fenrir. But when you do, it's a super consistent build in the fact that you are allowed to basically tutor out your entire deck for a specific card that you need. Anything from the Grade 2 Glyphnir to your Vandiganders to even uh, potential Grade 1s or Order cards that you potentially might need in order to close out the game. Overall, the card is underlooked but that doesn't make it any less powerful. It's a very scary card, especially in the late game when you're pushing for potential 2 damage on your opponent's 4 damage consistently every turn you're doing maybe four plus swings all with relatively large numbers so four of it very good card moving on so with of course our four mythic beast fenrir we have four copies of mythic beast vanagander so his ability when placed on van or rear soul blast one choose one of your opponent's regards and retire it and if you place vanagander on the vanguard circle you choose all of your opponent's regards instead so that in itself is really crazy. For a Soul Blast 1 on Vanguard, you wipe out the entire board. Um, I really wish Kagro had something like that, Bushiroad. Like, holy cow. And his second ability. At the end of the battle that he attacked a Vanguard, put this unit into your soul, look at three cards from the top of the deck, put one card from among them to the top, the other to the bottom, and the rest into your soul. Overall, he is your setup card. He is a very strong grade 3. If you have to ride him, it's not the end of the world because on the following turn, you can easily just ride the Fenrir if you get him, tutor him out via abilities, or possibly even like Soul Blast him out and then get another copy from your deck. So it is a very powerful card in the sense that it is a quote-unquote control card, but at the same time, it allows you to consistently stack your deck for push plays that you're going to be doing. So you would normally swing, uh, call him on a side, maybe with a force 2 marker on him, swing, uh, put him into the soul, stack your deck with potential critical triggers, and then uh, play it out from there. And if not, then you have a backup strategy, which I will show in my grade 2 slot. But for now, 4 of him, good card. Now, moving on to the grade 2s. Now, my grade 2 slot, uh, I was testing primarily with uh, various different types of grade 2s, but this is the current uh, lineup that I'm most comfortable with, and I will show it to you guys. So, I am playing four copies of Glefnir. So Glefnir's ability is when placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, Counterblast 1, Soul Charge 1, choose one card from your soul and return it to your hand. And then on Rearguard, when he attacks, Soul Blast 1, he gets 10k. So very, very good card for this deck. Okay, so he helps tutor out the cards that are necessary to perform combos from your soul, as well as being a uh, beat stick that you need to potentially push out games. So... What I mean by that is that by himself, on a Soul Blast 1, he's a 20k uh, beater. But if you have something like a Skull or like a Hati on uh, boosting him, he's going to be plus 13k. So that's a 33 by itself. If you have, you know, Force 2 markers on it or Force 1, he's a, he's a bigger boy or he's uh, potentially swinging in for a larger crit. 
uh, which is really strong. Uh, another reason why I like him is that because he soul blasts during the battle phase, he allows for uh, multiple attack combos to uh, take part in uh, combination with your grade 3 Fenrir's effect. And the card that we normally like to call likes to be called during the battle phase because it has an on place ability. And then when its uh, on place ability triggers, depending on what you draw into, it's a super good card to push for the late game and to potentially blow out your opponent. So overall, three of Glefnir, super good card. Highly recommend to run him out of, as a four of. To that, we are running three copies of good old Ulixis. Now, Ulixis at this point is a super, I would want to say, staple card in most Genesis builds. I mean, depending on the build that you're talking about, but overall, just a very good card. At the end of the battle, he attacks, put him into soul, draw a card, soul charge one. So, helps mitigate board by uh, swinging in and then. Uh, tagging out to have your opponent be forced to attack the vanguard for potential counter blasts that you might need for the following turn as well as being able to draw your card and put more cards into the soul not only that but because he's a grade two in soul when you ride into your uh fenrir for the following uh turn he is a grade two that you can potentially soul blast out to search for an additional grade two or you know in combinations with grade ones to search out for a grade three such as a vanagander that you might need so overall very good tempo card i'm comfortable with running him as, as a three of and the reason for that is because I wanted to put as much space as I could for the uh, next card because I personally feel like the next card is a very powerful card. It's not necessary, but I find it to be a very strong card. So you guys might be wondering what that card is, and I will show it to you right now. It is three copies of Battle Maiden, Sahoe Hime. So Sahoe Hime, ability, one placed, counter blast one, soul blast two. You draw two cards, then you put a card from your hand into your soul, and her power increases by the shield value of the card that you put into the soul until the end of the turn. So, she's a very good card for this deck for a few reasons. One, in the early game, if you don't have the combo pieces that you uh, need, she can potentially make you draw into them because it is a draw two. And then two for the late game, when you're pushing in for on your Fenrir turn, you do something like swinging with your Vandegander, then you, uh, if your deck possibly is not stacked with triggers because, you know, Vandegander can't always guarantee you double triggers, you then would proceed to do something like swinging with your uh, Glefnir or swinging with your Fenrir, Soul Blast 1, and, you know, if you're filtering through your deck, you would have the Sahoe Hime in, in your soul, you would Soul Blast the Sahoe Hime, you'd call her, you'd Counter Blast 1, you would draw those uh, dead cards that you would have drove check, and then you put in a large shield value like a heal trigger or the sentinel critical trigger, and then she gets plus 20k, K, plus 30k. And if she's on a, a force 2 marker, that makes her a very scary card for pushing in. So overall, very, very good card. Obviously, you can run something else if you want, but as it stands right now, I'm very comfortable with her uh, being as a 3 of 2 because um, she's a good ride target. She is good to search out. And if need be, she can be shoved into the soul with uh, Bangle, which is what we run. We run the order card. Overall, very good card. Yeah, next, grade one slots. So the grade one slot, uh, it's actually kind of funny. It's actually very, if you guys watched my uh, my Himiko profile, the grade one slot is very similar. Um, I'm going to say, like I said last time, at the time of this recording, we don't have that grade one promo. But when we do, I would actually recommend adding it into this deck only because it's a very strong card guys like it it, it pumps up your vanguard it stacks your deck and that in combination with uh vanagander is actually super super strong but as it stands right now the the deck performs well as enough as it is so i'm okay with not running it at the current moment but when we do get it i probably would put it in the deck but that is up to you guys uh anyway enough of my rambling let's get on to the grade ones grade one slots four of mythic beast skull ability during your turn, when you Soul Blast it, he gets 5k, and then he's a generic uh, V searcher for grade 3s. So overall, he is a uh, big beater in the late game, as well as a potential beater in the early game, depending on what you Soul Blast. But of course, the main reason why we play him is because we want to ride our Fenrir. The point of the deck is to get Fenrir, and the best way we can get Fenrir is to play cards that can consistently search him out. So therefore, we need to play four of him. He's a super good card, guys. If you are a Genesis uh, player, I highly recommend that you grab this card as a four of. Okay, next, we are going to be playing four copies to follow it off with Mythic Beast Hati. So Hati, also, same ability. When Soul Blasted, he gets 5k. However, when he's placed on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, you can Soul Charge 2 with this card. So 
Same concept with uh, such a skull, he's a big beater. However, in the other instance when he's placed and you soul charge, he has the ability to soul charge necessary combo pieces into your soul to push in for those late game turns. Overall, he's a very strong card. It's a potential card you can actually swap out once the uh, grade one promo is released, but as it stands right now, super comfortable with it. Very good card. I am also going to be running four copies of Astria of the Full Heavens. Now, her ability, when placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, you may draw a card, then put a card from your bottom of your deck, and if she was placed on Vanguard Circle, you Soul Charge 2. Then, at the end of the battle that she boosted, you Soul Blast 2, and you bounce this unit back to your hand. So there's a few reasons why we play this card. One, she's going to be your ideal grade 1 ride for this build. Ideally, because you want to, again, draw as many cards as you can to try and get into your Fenrir, because you obviously want to try and ride into Fenrir as fast as you can. Second, she is able to Soul Charge 2, filter more cards into your soul to be able to perform your uh, plays uh, faster. And then lastly, and most people don't necessarily look at this part, but her Soul Blast 2 ability is a battle ability. Meaning, um, if you don't have cards that interact uh, in the battle phase, uh, the less cards you have to interact in your battle phase, the more the, the combo won't be able to work. So if you don't have things like Glefnir, or even potentially um, Fenrir, depending on what you stack with the Vandegander, you're going to want to play in a way that allows you to Soul Blast in certain intervals during the battle phase. I know that sounds weird, but the deck as it is, it's it's very reactive with you, right? You have to strategize and lay out how you want to attack, and then based on how you attack and how things uh, turn out with like trigger checks and withdraws and soul charges, then you might want to attack in a different order. You want to be able to adapt to that, and she um, is an answer to that. So overall, super good card. Obviously, you know, she can be replaced. You know, something like the grade one promo that I keep mentioning is a very good replacement for her. But yeah, give her a try. Tell me what you think, obviously, in the comments down below. Very curious to know other people's opinions. So for my last grade one, guys, I am playing three copies of Bengal. So Bengal, very good order card, guys. It allows you to search for certain cards that you need in your deck, as well as being able to fill your soul. Specifically, right? Let's say you want to do that Sahoe Hime turn, but you didn't ride her. You drew into her, okay? You play the bangle. Now you shove her into the soul. You are set to go. Plus, you get an additional card in your hand. Super good. Again, it's not consistent in the fact that I think you can only uh, activate one order per turn. So you obviously don't want to draw into as many of them. But it's also a very good search target if you need for the Fenrir play. So, yeah. Very good card. Now, moving on to the triggers. The triggers in himself very straightforward this deck is supposed to be super aggressive much like the himiko deck it's just a little more consistent in the fact of how it's able to push but it's still the same concept you want to try and be able to ram into your opponent as fast as you can with as many cards as you can so that's why i play this specific lineup so for the heals we play four heals then we play four and four for a total of four heal eight crit and then we also play four of the sentinel critical triggers making a grand total of 12 crit and four heal i mean you can obviously try and run the draw triggers if you want but as it stands right now and especially how the meta is playing out right now it's a very aggro meta so therefore i think you need to close out the game as fast as you can and critical triggers will get you there and then lastly we have the best starter in all of genesis look how cute it is adorable and yeah that is the deck everyone so overall I think the deck is actually very strong. It's not obviously as strong as something like Gold Paladins and, and uh, Angel Feathers, but that doesn't mean you can't take your opponent off by surprise with th what this deck can potentially do. Not only that, but if you plan things out thoroughly, you're going to see that this deck can consistently get you there. And it's less about you being punished by the deck, more so the deck punishes you for misplaying. So you have to really strategize. But of course, if you have any comments about the uh, Genesis profile here, I'm more than happy to try and read them in the comments down below. And I think that is going to close it out for me, guys. So with that in mind, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Deuces!